the Roy, your English master teacher at Vedantu. And today we are going to start off with a beautiful and a very, 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 uh, you know, a, a poem which is going to be evident, sorry, relevant in, a, in our contemporary life. That is After Blenheim by Robert Sade. It's a beautiful poem and also a poem which you will find very impactful and relevant in today's life. Let's get started with the word of the day, which was suggested by Nitya. Thank you so much, Nitya, for suggesting the word of the day. And that is hysteria. It is a noun, which means extreme fear, excitement, anger, which is absolutely uncontrollable. Uh, very good. One woman close to hysteria grabbed by my arm. That's the sentence, guys. Now, all of you present in the class, let's get started by making a sentence with hysteria. All of you should make one sentence with hysteria and put down in the chat box. Come on, people. Come on, everyone, each one of you present in the class, do make a sentence so that you know the usage of this particular word. All right, guys, rapid fire round. Are we all ready with our rapid fire round? So the very first question of the rapid fire round is, what color bangles are suitable for a maiden's wrist? So, those of you who have watched the previous session would definitely be able to answer this. If you haven't watched the previous session, please go back and watch the previous session. Very, very important, guys. Okay, answers in the chat box. Silver and blue. Superb. Wind blowing. Good job. Next question. Who will buy purple and gold flecked gray bangles? Come on, people. Brides, happy daughters, women who have journeyed through uh, life midway or maidens. Purple and gold black grey bangles are, all of you, come on, hurry up. Yes, it is. The matronly women, that is women who have journeyed through the life, uh, you know, through their life and they are in the middle stage, right? So, middle-aged women. Good job. How many of you have got both the answers correct? Give me a quick thumbs up in the chat box. Okay, so with that, we will start off with the session today. First, we will know a little bit about the poet Robert Sade. Please note that he was a poet from the Lake School of Poetry. Okay, he belonged to something called the Lake School. Please have a detailed information about the Lake School of Poets. Please do let me know in the comment section. Okay, this is your homework. Find out what is Lake School of Poetry. I will be taking up your answers in the next session. All right, guys. So, Robert Sade belonged to the Lake School and he was an English poet of the Romantic School. Okay, he was selected as Romantic School. I think you already know, right? Romantic School of Poetry. Uh, we have other Romantic poets like, you know, Keats, Shelley, Byron. So, uh, he was also one of the poets. He was also elected as a member of the American Antiquarian Society in 1822, okay? Uh, and he was a poet laureate from 1813 till his death. Like other romantic poets, he had begun as a radical poet but became steadily more conservative as he acquired respect for Britain and its institutions. So he, this is a very... Uh, this is, these are the informations that you need to know about Robert Sade. And now, do let me know in the chat box, what comes in your mind when you look at the picture? This is a picture, guys. You can see already what is there in the picture. So, whatever you think of, just tell me in the chat box. Please post your answers in the chat box. Okay, so the first word would be, I guess, definitely war that you can see. What else? Bloodshed. Right? Anything else? Martyr maybe? Right? Soldiers? You can see soldiers. Anything else? Uh, you can see uh, weapons. Right? You can see destruction. Anna? Anything else? Horror? Else, any other word that comes in your mind? Maybe trauma, maybe fear, right? So, these are the words, and you can come up with other words too. So, keep these words in, uh, in your mind. 
somebody may be thinking about glory glory that is achieved after the achievement of martyrdom yes or you can also come uh, uh, come with the word called romantic or glorification so war a uh, war is sometimes glorified also right we think that, that that is the romantic concept of the war when you are glorifying war when you are glorifying the martyrs who are actually uh, sacrificing their lives for uh, for people right so keep these key points in your mind because from here we will be moving ahead with the poem which is going to deal with all of this theek okay? hai let's start out with the preface to the poem first of all guys it is an anti war poem please note it's an anti war poem written in the form of a ballad ballad is a sing song manner theek okay? hai anti war poem is it is exposing the horrors of the war and it is absolutely breaking the veil of romance which people have uh, for war so glorification of war people glorify war right people think that war uh, somebody who has a you who has received martyrdom i mean who has uh, died or sacrificed his life in his war he is a martyr he needs to be glorified and therefore in the process also glorifying war but this poem is absolutely in talking about the negative elements of war talking about the gruesome effects of war the horrors of war okay now what is a ballad it's a poem which tells a folk story and may be set to music i told you it's uh, done in a sing song manner after blenheim that is the name of the poem right so this describes the battle of blenheim which took place in the year 1704 okay now we will be talking about the historical background a little bit so that you know under which context is the poem set that is very very important for your understanding of the poem right through a conversation between an old man and his grandchildren this poem depicts a common man's ignorance about the casualties and the pointless glory of the war that's what i was telling you throughout people glorify war right so this poem is shaking off that veil of romance and exposing war as a necessary evil all right and this is from the point of view of a layman of a common ignorant man like me and you who do not know anything about the real battlefield what happens there we are absolutely ignorant about what happens in a real battlefield so that is what the poet is trying to talk about you can read the other anti war poems also uh, very famous is uh, the poem of uh, poems by wilfred owen who actually talked about uh, the fact that my subject is war and its pity of war and the pity of war right so that means he exposes very clearly in his poems the pity of war the horrors of war right so wilfred owen's poems are anti war poems you can read it they are so very touching now talking about the historical backdrop of the battle of blenheim guys first of all this poem is an anti war poem and that definitely talks about the 18th century 17 uh, 100 and, uh, what was the year i forgot the year 1704 yes so 1704 that is the 18th century battle of blenheim okay this was written in 1796 in the form of a ballad i told you what's a ballad okay 1704 war of spanish succession that was the year i told you no need to remember the date for this particular uh, uh, you know poem but uh, just for your knowledge war of spanish succession i don't know whether you have read this in your history but uh, yeah it was bad uh, what was the war about Uh, i mean who were who were the uh, forces who fought english and franco bavarian army okay so the english defeated the franco bavarian army all right so that was the war okay guys so through a conversation between an old farmer and his grandchildren who are the grandchildren wilhelmine and peter king okay the poet gradually reveals the scene of the former battlefield okay and then the war definitely caused huge devastation so we will see now let's see and we have an ironic effect at the end so in this session we will be doing the first 
few stanzas, first five or six stanzas, because it's a long uh, poem containing 11 stanzas, right? So we won't be able to complete the complete poem, the full poem today in the session. We will be doing only the first five or six stanzas today. All right, guys, you can read through this. Uh, okay, whatever were important I have already talked about. And now we would be moving to the line by line explanation. Okay, guys, so let's read the very first stanza. It was a summer evening. Old Casper's work was done. And before, and he before his cottage door was sitting in the sun. And by him sought, sported on the green his little grandchild, Wilhelmine. So you can see that the poem is definitely in a sing-song manner. It's in a, a form, it's in a form of ballad. What is the setting? Summer evening. Okay, a very casual setting. Okay, an old man, having finished his work, was sitting in the cottage door, and his little granddaughter was playing near him. That was the, that is the backdrop under which the, uh, you know, against which the poet is set. So nothing is spectacular. Very, very common and familiar setting. Okay. Vocabulary, guys. Sported. Here it means play. And now talking about the poetic device in the very first stanza, we have the poetic device of metonymy. Was sitting in the sun. Right. So it's a figurative language, which means basically he was basking in the sun. Okay. Sitting in the sun is basking in the sun. So metonymy is a poetic device where you know one uh, in which uh, one term is substituted by the other okay so that's metonymy so it means basking in the sun okay so next question for you people what season was it very simple autumn spring summer or winter come on guys yes it is summer all right so next is stanza 2. Okay, next. One second. Okay, next is stanza 2. Now let's read the second stanza. She saw her brother, Peter Kidd, roll something large and round. This is very, very important. Which he beside the rivulet was, uh, which he beside the rivulet in playing there had found. He came to ask what he had found that was so large and smooth and round. Now this will actually expose us to the horrors of war. Let us see how. The little girl Wilhelmine saw her brother Peter Kidd rolling something that was large and round. Can you guess what could it be? Something large and round. Do you think it's a ball? No, it's not a ball. It is something that will blow your mind. Okay. Peter King had discovered the thing by the side of a rivulet. What's a rivulet? A small stream where he was playing. He came back to ask his father what that thing was. Now let us see what his father has to say. What his grandfather has to say. Vocabulary, guys, take care of the vocabulary. And poetic device, hyperbated, which he beside the rivulet in playing there had found. What is hyperbated? When the, uh, when the, you know, arrangement of your words are changed in a sentence. When the words are rearranged in a sentence. So you can look over here how the words are rearranged in a sentence, right? Okay, next is polysyndeton, the use of conjunction okay so twice it has been used right so too many conjunctions used that's called polysyndeton okay poly is many right sorry this will be poly syn s y n okay please correct this polysyndeton moving ahead question for you people i want all of you to give me the answer in the chat box what did wilhelmine see peter king doing she saw her. Uh, she saw him. She saw him playing with the dog. She saw her brother Peter King rolling something that was large and round. She saw him plucking flowers. She saw his brother lying down in the lawn. Come on, people! Answers in the chat box, everyone. Okay, let's check. Yes. 
So the second one is absolutely correct. How many of you have got this answer correct? Give me a quick high five in the chat box. Okay, now are we ready to look into what did Peter Kin, uh, what did, uh, yeah, uh, Peter Kin actually find in that uh, place beside the rivulet where he was playing? Are we ready? Let's have a look. Okay, so before moving ahead, let me remind you guys, you can join us to gain 100% knowledge and 100% marks. Vedantu is promising your improvement. So if you do not see your improvement, guys, your course fees would be returned. You can have high level quiz questions in every class. You have unlimited live quiz uh, classes with high level quiz questions. You get a lot of exposure with the students throughout the world. Even the replays are so very interactive and you know with leaderboards in every session. Plus you can download all the content at the end of every session. You can solve all the doubts with the help of our class teachers along with the notes and assignments that you will get plus quality tests that we will give you and we will give you the performance report and the micro courses are absolutely free even i have my micro courses right now going on so you can join my micro courses okay and guys we have all of this at a very very less price so what you need to do is just visit the link and use the coupon code in order to get the 10% discount. There are three types of plans, light, classic and plus. Now in light, the first plan, you, I mean in all the plans you will get all these four features common, live interactive class, test series analysis, assignments and notes, doubt solving during class. All these are common in the three plans. Now guys, in the th second plan that is classic, you will find doubt solving on mobile app. Amazing, amazing facility. So no more doubts piled up in your mind. All are going to be clear, right? And the last, guys, is you can also get a personal mentor. Isn't that amazing, guys? So this is designed in such a manner that it's going to fulfill all the needs, especially in the present day scenario when you are struggling, when the entire system of education is facing so many challenges. We, uh, we are giving you we are solving, we are trying to solve each and every problem that you can face. And all the micro courses are absolutely free. They are auto, uh, you know, they, they are uh, there in the subscription itself. You can, you know, get it without any extra payment. So we are promising your improvement. Otherwise, we will be returning your course fee. That is something which, uh, which is a step that we have taken to ensure your improvement in whatever Know, in your academic performance and all the subjects right okay guys so what we need from you is 75 percent of attendance and 75 percent of the completion of the assigned test and then you can definitely improve if you don't then you get back your course fee without any question asked these are the dates where our new batches are starting cbsc icsc maharashtra ge need please note down the dates and you can join us. What are you waiting for guys? Hurry up and click on the link in the description box and join us. Okay, so guys, now let us see what happens next. Old Casper took it from the boy who stood expected by and then the old man shook his head with a natural sigh. This some poor fellow skull, just imagine the way the horror is exposed in a very, very, very casual manner by the grandfather. This some poor fellow skull, said he, fell in that great victory, ironical. Victory is being called, I mean, it's called a great victory where you are finding skull of some poor fellow. Wait, so that is very ironical. So what kind of victory is that and why is it? Great. Why is it called great when people are losing their lives in that war? That is how he is exposing the brutalities of war. The old man Casper took it from Peter Kin and he looked at it. He shook, he shook his head in sorrow and he sighed. And he, what did he say? That he was proud of the victory won by the English. Why is it called a great victory? Because I have told you the background. The English had defeated the Franco-Bavarian army. So that is why the grandfather belonging to the uh, 
uh, winning side was proud of that victory but we are ignoring the fact so very casually that so many people died that we, uh, even peter king while playing with uh, while playing is finding the skull of a dead soldier so just imagine the situation and the way and the casual attitude of the grandfather when he is narrating this horrific a uh, horrifying truth right guys vocabulary please take a look at this vocabulary because uh, this will be easier for you to understand moving ahead is the poetic device okay poetic device is great victory is an irony as i have already mentioned what is irony the difference between expectation and reality so if somebody is dying we are not expecting that victory to be great first of all it's not nothing uh, to be victorious about when when uh, you know both sides are losing so many lives right and then it is not, not nothing to be glorified right so this is this is what this is the glorification of war this is what is glorification of war and that is what the poet is trying to shake so that veil of romance okay there is nothing romantic about war there is nothing to glorify about war where so many people so many young lives are losing their lives question for you people in what form is the poem written first person second person third person or dialogue very very simple i have just told you at the beginning of the poem please put down your answers in the chat box guys okay let's see how many of you could do it correctly it is in a conversational manner yes in the form of a dialogue I hope all of you got this correct. Moving ahead with the next stanza. I find them in the garden. Now the horror is getting deeper and deeper. So there's many here about, and often when I go to plow, the plow share turns them out. Oh my God! For many thousand men, he said, was slain in that great. the last two lines are very 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 crucial for us to understand okay so if there are thousands and thousands of men dying in the battlefield then why is the victory for great that is a question which all of us should ask ourselves right before glorifying what uh, before before glorifying war Now the old man is saying that he found a number of skulls scattered in the garden. So what kind of life is this, where the children are finding skull, where the grandfather is explaining very in a very casual tone that I have found a number of skulls already in the garden. When I went to plow in my field, so many skulls were dug out of the earth. So just imagine the horrific situation. it was so because thousands of men were killed he again is referring to the battle as a great victory so this is what is a layman's perspective of a war of battle field we think sitting in our comfortable places we think okay so we are winning but have we ever given it a thought that in that process how many lives are getting destroyed how many soldiers are getting martyred for i mean they are losing their lives right have we ever thought uh, have we ever empathized with their with their family have we ever empathized with those young lives which are getting you know destroyed at the prime of their age and this happens in both sides right so this is what the poet is trying to point out Okay, now plow share is broad blade of a plow. Please note the word meaning. Okay, guys, moving ahead with the poetic device. Many thousand men is hyperbole. So when you are exaggerating, that figure of speech is hyperbole. Okay, for example, in Dakotas we had right one thousand I saw at a glance. So that's also a hyperbole. You did not count right. that there were thousands but you in an exaggerating manner you had said this so that is hyperbole okay next stanza guys and this is the final stanza that we will be covering today and then in the next class we will be completing the poem all right guys 
Now tell us what it was all about. Young Peter King, he cries. And little William Mind looks up with wonder waiting eyes. So her eyes are filled with wonder. She's curious to know about the story just like all the children okay, of her age. Now tell us about the war and what they fought each other for. Very, very important question that we all need to ask ourselves. What are we fighting for? What are we fighting for? Very, very crucial question which we often forget to ask. Right? Moving ahead. The young Peter King got anxious to know all about the incident and Wilhelmine also was looking up with her keen eyes wanted to know about the war and what they fought for each other. What was the reason behind the fight with behind the war? And such a great war where so many people are losing their lives. The, you know, uh, the field is filled with skulls of human beings. When it is dark, the plowshare uh, with the, 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 you know, uh, when the grandfather is digging the uh, ground with his plowshare, he is, he is discovering skulls. The, his grandchildren are discovering skulls. So what was the reason that led to such a horrific situation? Okay. So vocabulary is, it was, very, very simple, poetic device, wonder waiting eyes. First of all, we have alliteration over here. Okay. The repetition of the consonant sound W, W, W and hyperledge or transferred epithet. Okay, what is that? Wonder waiting eyes. Okay, so eyes, what is transferred epithet? When one adjective is transferred from a different uh, uh, noun or a pronoun to something different, to some other noun or a pronoun. So here, eyes are not uh, filled with wonder. The girl is filled with wonder, but it has been transferred to the eyes. Okay, so that's hyperlage or transferred epithet. Last question, guys. Explain the expression wonder waiting eyes. Okay, it means he is sad because of the war. It means surprised, waiting for reply, excited to hear the story, or none of the above. Come on. Okay, let's have a look at the answer. Yes. So surprised or waiting for the reply. Wonder. That means curious, surprised and also curious to know okay, what happened. So guys, with that, today's session we will be ending here and we will be continuing what happened in the next few stanzas at the end, uh, in the next section. Alright guys, please do post the homework question, homework answers. I will be taking the top five answers from your comments for the next session. Don't forget to post the word of the day and the comment for the homework question in the comment section. The homework is strike against war for without you no battle can be fought. This is by Helen Keller. You have to discuss this. Right, guys, thank you so much. I hope you people enjoyed the session. For any queries, guys, please post down, put down your comments in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the like button. Share the video amongst your friends and also if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, do subscribe to the channel. Okay. Till then, take care. Bye-bye and happy learning.